So I've got a real uh, simple drawing here. This is going to accompany sheet 10-9 and you've got to use your imagination just a little bit, but we've got this uh, pink um, vehicle here that runs with an electric motor, 480 volt, three phase. So 480 volt, three phase, and we've been looking at how we um, switch uh, two of the phases in order to get the direction to change. So we can either go that way or we go this way based on changing any two of those phases. So our, our little pink card here moves freight, say, back and forth across this distance. Okay. At this end, I've got a, a limit switch, and I've got it drawn down here. It's a closed contact. This is supposed to be closed. It might not be quite closed. I've got it labeled up here, normally closed. And then down here, I've got a second contact, and it also is normally closed. So once you kind of have an understanding, we're going back. I'm going to hit this limit switch. It's going to stop. And then we can go forward. It's going to hit this limit switch. It's going to stop. And then we can go back and forth, back and forth. So here's our one-line diagram. We've got our forward starter and our reverse starter, and I've got them labeled here, forward and reverse. And we've got a set of contacts out in front of each of those starters, and that represents a mechanical interlock. And that's what we're going to look at today in this video, how that mechanical interlock prevents the forward and the reverse from being energized at the same time. Because if we were to energize each of those at the same time, we would create a short circuit in our 480 volt line voltage and potentially that could either blow fuses or trip a breaker or potentially damage some equipment. So mechanical interlock is located there. Here's those limit switches I was talking about. And then if we just look at this portion here we've got just a standard stop along with a forward button, reverse button. We've got holding contacts for each contactor both forward and reverse so we're using 13 and 14 and I have the mechanical interlock labeled 2122 over here. So here's what our parts and pieces will look like. We've got a forward starter forward, we've got a reversing starter reversing, my interlock sandwiched right in between those two contactors and then I have my overload unit here at the bottom I only have one motor, so therefore I just need one overload unit. But what we're going to do here at the bottom is we're going to do some changes of how we configure our 480 volt or our line voltage. And we're going to do our, our change down here. So we're going to change two phases and two phases. So we'll do that change here at the bottom, and then our line voltage will be at the top. And our overload unit will trip in the event of an overload and it will shut both the forward off and the reverse off depending on uh, which one is energized. Here's our mechanical interlock that we're looking at. This is the front view. This is what you'll see when it's sandwiched between the two contactors. You'll have one contactor on each side of it. This is what it looks like on the side. There's a couple of little pins that get inserted into the side of the contactor and then this little brown lever here or mechanism that fits into a small hole in the side of the contactor. Um, before you uh, kind of get going wiring this, it'll be my recommendation you, you grab a hold of one of these and you can see if you slide this back on the other side, the other pin won't move. Or if this one slid ahead, the other one on the other side will actually be able to move. So it, it creates a system where if one is one way, the other one on the other side can't go or can't move. And so what you're doing is, is when we're looking at those two coils, the forward and the reverse, if the forward is uh, energized, or actually I should say, I'm sorry, the reverse is energized, then the forward can't energize. So it won't work. And that prevents that short circuit situation that we're trying to avoid. So here's the side of our contactor. This is that hole right here. Sorry. This little hole right here. That's where that little brown lever will fit. 
So this is just a picture of the mechanical interlock. Uh, it's sitting on the side of the motor starter. And uh, the second contactor, of course, will come down and uh, rest up against it. So here's our forward and our reversing uh, contactors with the overload section on the bottom of the forward contactor. Got our mechanical interlock sandwiched in between. And we're focused right now on these contacts, this one here and this contact here. And I've got it drawn here as you'd see it on the one line diagram. So I have this one labeled R. So this would be the closed contact. And basically, if you think about this, we're running the coil circuit of our forward uh, coil on our forward contactor. We're going to run that through this closed contact. So we have to pay attention up here at the top. There's an arrow that points us to a direction. And I have a note on here that says, open with this contactor. So in the event that this contactor here gets energized, this contact now opens. And so we have to make sure we select the correct contact <clears throat> here in order to run the, the coil of the opposite contactor through. So notice I have R here, so it's a closed contact on the reverse contactor and we've got the coil of the forward there.